Opening Pokemon cards is pretty fun. That is especially true if you finally open that chase card, or maybe even that alternate art you were looking for. I mean, just listen to this guy. Got a Beldum. Reverse. And we got the Lugia V alternate art in German! What? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This can't be real! And while the illustration for the alternate arts and full art renders is typically amazing in their own right, a Pokemon set consists of much more than just their alternate and chase cards. So in this video I want to cover some of the underappreciated artworks from the Sword and Shield era. So just sit back, relax, and let's take a look at these cards together, shall we? So let's take a little trip down memory lane and start it off with the Sword and Shield base set. Right here we have the Ninetales drawn by Megumi Higuchi, actually their debut card. And even if this is their first card, you can tell that this artist is incredibly talented. I mean, just look at the background. The blue and orange work so well together, as well as the flowers flying around. And you can't forget Ninetales, which is of course the focus of the card, is very, very well illustrated. And honestly, I'm a bit surprised that this artist hasn't drawn an alternate art during the Sword and Shield era. I mean, just judging by this illustration, they clearly have the talent. But let's move it on to the next card. Here we have a mobile illustrated by Akira Igawa, who is quickly becoming my favorite artist. I have a lot of cards of his featured on this list, and if you recognize the art style, that might be because this is the same artist that drew the Golden God Pokemon cards from Crown Zenith. What I love about all his illustrations, and this mobile in particular, is just the dynamic battle stance. They do it for most of their illustrations, and they do it very well, as you're gonna see later on. But just this mobile, you have to get once again a beautiful background, the rain, also the waves or the water splashing up, and of course Mobile being the centerpiece of the whole illustration. This is this is top notch. An honorable mention, or maybe I should say two honorable mentions, definitely go to the Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Shan by Shigenori Negishi. They essentially share an artwork. You have the Hitmon Shan training in the background of the Hitmon Lee, and the other way around, of course. Really, really great stuff, love this. Let's move it on to Rebel Clash. Here we have another Ninetales. I promise you that is a coincidence. Similar to the Mawile though, this is drawn by Akira Igawa as well. And this artwork in particular proves that this artist is so incredibly talented. I mean, not only is the Ninetales itself drawn beautifully, you also have that stunning background. The illustration also perfectly conveys the wind howling around the mountains. And by the looks of things, it seems to be a cold winter night. The next card is one of the very few V Pokemon that made it onto the list. Here we have a Milotic V by Ayaka Yoshida. Milotic is a pretty beautiful Pokemon. I mean, you literally have to get your Phoebus up to a high enough beautiful stat for it to even evolve into this Pokemon. And this illustration captures that beauty perfectly. Next up, we have this Clefairy. And if you've been around for a while, you should recognize this art style immediately. It is, of course, by the very, very talented Soso. Soso originally debuted during the Sun and Moon era with Forbidden Light, where they drew a beautiful Avalok. What I really love about the illustrations is that colored pencil look they give them, as well as the ability to make the Pokemon look the most adorable they can ever be. Last, but certainly not least from Rebel Clash, we have this Zatu by Sotaro. And while they debuted all the way back during the Sun and Moon era in 2017, Unfortunately, there aren't that many illustrations by them, which is a real shame because this is also top-notch. Let's see. Ah, yes, Darkness Ablaze, where the best card you can pull is actually incredibly ugly. So let's look at this Go Lurk instead, drawn by Anesaki Dynamic. And you know how much I love dynamic poses, and they really come true to their name. This is an incredibly dynamic pose from the Go Lurk picking up a really, really big rock and just trying to throw it at the enemy. This is beautiful stuff. Next up, we have the Darkrai, drawn by Nagimisu, who also drew the Raikou V from Crown Zenith. I mean, this just speaks for itself. Of course, Darkrai, so you have an illustration drawn at night. And not only that, it also appears to be like a blood moon of some sorts. Really, really amazing. Last up for Darkness Ablaze, we have another Akira Igawa illustration, here we have the Staraptor. And do I even need to speak about this illustration? This just once again speaks for itself and cements why he's like my favorite artist. Maybe this should have been the Akira Igawa list. I might come back to that in, in a future video. 
but there you go. For Champion's Path, we only really have one illustration that I want to feature. This Victini by Taira Akitsu. This is a really nice illustration, and the artist even went on to later draw the Garchomp V from Astro Radiance, which is one of my favorite trainer gallery cards. Vivid Voltage, so it started off with an electric type Pokemon, here we have a Zapdos. Once again, illustrated by Akira Igawa. Like at this point, I should just let the illustration speak for itself, because there's nothing else I have to say. This is just stunning stuff from, from the artist. Next up we have the Lycan Rock, drawn also by Anisaki Dynamic, same as the Golurp we featured earlier. And once again, a dynamic pose. You have like the strike in motion illustrated, like the scratch or whatever. You have the moon, of course, in the background because that is, of course, the midnight form of the Lycan Rock. And other than that, once again, beautiful stuff. Last up for Vivid Voltage, we have this Lugia by NC Empire. This is also an artist that is featured multiple times on this list. And while they only debuted back in Darkness Ablaze, I really do hope we get to see an SAR from them at some point. Next up is Shining Fates, and I do have to mention this illustration, like by all means. The Snom by Tika Matsuno. I mean, Snom is already pretty adorable, so you can't really go wrong with any illustration of this Pokemon. There is only one more illustration that I would like to feature from Shining Fates, and it's this Morpek Elf by Saya Tsuruta. This illustration is incredibly adorable. You have Shuckle, Trumbeak, and Morpeko making berry juice out of the berries they've collected. And there is also an easter egg about this artist. In every single illustration, she's featured a Pokeball. Can you find the one in this one? Next up is Battle Styles, the first expansion to feature alternate arts. But since they are not the point of this video, let's look at this Entei instead by Kodama. An other artist that is featured multiple times on this list and for very good reason, as I'm sure you're gonna see later on. This illustration itself is pretty amazing, but just wait until you see some of the later ones. Next up is this Electabuzz by Hazuno. And this illustration really is on another level. I just love the stance of the Electabuzz, of course, the electricity, the background. The Electabuzz just looks like he's getting ready for a boss fight or something. For Chilling Rain, I actually have a lot of cards that I want to show you, so let's get it started right with this Grookey right here. By Kodama again, just like the Electabuzz I just showed you. And this is really, really nicely illustrated. You have like the in-motion illustration, making it look like that the Grookey is in fact like punching the tree stump or hammering on the tree stump. Really, really cool illustration. Next up is the Sneasel by NC Empire, as I've mentioned. A few more cards by, by this artist on this list. But this in itself is also pretty cool. We have the um, Obama Snow in the background. And the Sneasel is just helping him cut the, the berries in like halves and, and things like that. This looks really, really cool. Okay, so I'm a huge fan of Pokemon that have like very, very happy Pokemon as an illustration. And this is no different. Here we have a Sphiel by Kirisaki. You might recognize this artist by the plethora of full art trainers they drew, like the Iridor, for example, the Raihan, the Avery, and most notably the Skylar from Shining Fates. Next up is this God of War, once again an illustration by Kodama. And what I love about this illustration in particular is that the focus is not just on the God of War itself, but on the attack it's charging up in the background as well. And as cool as this illustration is, this is not the best God of War illustration on this list, so stay tuned for that. But first of all, we have to finish off Chilling Rain with this Galate, another Pokemon from the Ralts and Curlia evolution line. And this illustration is pretty cool. You have the forest in the background, the red flowers on the ground, and the most notable part, the Galate, taking like a fighting stance and almost like looking at his opponent saying, yes, I'm ready, come at me. Moving it on to maybe the most thought after Sword and Shield set at the moment, Evolving Skies. Here we have a Jump Bluff by Tika Matsuno. As you know, I'm a huge fan when Pokemon are drawn in like a dynamic stance or something. And this is no different, you have the Jump Bluff kind of like practicing their movements or something. Absolutely beautifully illustrated. Next up is another illustration by Soso. Here we have a Chinchou. And once again, the illustration is so adorable. You have the Chinchou just minding his own business, chilling in the lake and relaxing. 
Next up for Evolving Skies, we also have this Hitmonchan by Uta. Not an artist that is featured particularly often on this list, but the artworks that are featured are top notch and one of the best around. I mean, just look at this illustration for example. The in motion punch displacing the water like from the rain or waterfall. This is great stuff. To finish off Evolving Skies, here we have a Salamence, once again an illustration by Kodama. And similar to the Akira Igawa illustrations that I've featured so far, this just speaks for itself. Next up is a lot of people's favorite set, it's of course Celebrations. And while the set is very small indeed, there are a few cards that I want to focus on right here. So let's start it off with the Reshiram and the Zekrom actually because they feature the same art style by Aya Kuzuba. Now if you've been around since the black and white era of Pokemon, you might recognize the art style of the Reshiram in particular. That is of course a nod to the Reshiram artwork from Legendary Treasures. And once again, I absolutely love like the colored penciled art style they use in their illustrations. I mean, as you know, I'm a really, really huge Mew fan. So of course I have to feature the Mew from Celebrations as well by Yu Nishida. I'm not joking by saying, this might actually be one of my favorite Mew illustrations of all time. This is so well done. Let's see, Fusion Strike, a set that I have had personally very bad luck with, but that doesn't mean the illustrations are bad by any means. I mean, just look at this Zerud by Anasaki Dynamic, another illustration that proves that they chose their name perfectly. Next up, we have this Arcanine, and just like the Mew from Celebrations, this is also illustrated by Yu Nishida. I particularly love their use of like colored pencil as well as the background of the Arcanine. Look at how well the blue like goes over into the orange. Wonderfully done. Next up is the Dark Cry by Uta. And just like I said, I don't have that many illustrations by Uta on this list, but the ones that I do are so incredibly well done. I mean, just check this illustration out. Damn! Next up is Brilliant Stars, and it started off with the Torterra by Oswaldo Cato, another artist that is immediately recognizable by their very particular art style. Which you might have already recognized because this is the same artist that drew the Golurk from Evolving Skies. Next up, we have another illustration by Anisaki Dynamic. We have the Mewtwo. In the illustration, it looks like that Mewtwo is almost like possessed or something, while also charging up a Shadow Ball or something. Last but not least for Brilliant Stars, we have another illustration by who else would it be? Akira Igawa, we have the Lipart. And for some reason, this illustration is giving me like Gotham City Batman vibes. The like high rise building, the night sky, of course, the moon featured in particular. Very, very cool stuff. Let's move it on to Astral Radiance. My personal favorite set in terms of illustrations and everything. And I do actually have the most cards featured for this expansion. So let's start it off with the Scyther right here by Ghidorah, which you might recognize right now as the person who drew that really, really expensive Dendra SAR from Triple Beat. But let's focus on the Scyther instead. I mean, just look at it, it's cutting through a big look with ease. Next, we have the Ponyta by Jiro Sazumo which makes great use of the reflection and everything in the background. Beautifully done. The Heatran V is the other V card that is featured on this list, and it is illustrated by the man, the myth, the legend, Mitsuhiro Arita, and this proves that even after all these years, he can still find amazing ways to draw these Pokemon. Now, let's see, we also have this Glaceon by Saino Misaki, Lots of greenery in the background. It's also standing on, on a berry. There's like a citrus berry next to it and like looks like a petcha berry it's standing on. Really, really cute stuff. Second to last, we have the Ralts from Hataya. And I still remember when I first saw this card, I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. I mean, the illustration, just look at it. It's so well done. Last up for Astro Radiance, let's stay at the Ralts Evolution line. Here we have a Gallade by Atsushi Furusawa. And immediately I had to think of Sekiro. You have the reeds in the background, it's dark at night, the moon. I mean, the Gallade just looks like it's gonna attack our protagonist wolf and start talking about Ashina in a second here. 
Pokemon Go, probably my least favorite set, but that doesn't mean that there aren't cool illustrations in this. Just take this Blastoise by NC Empire for example. Waterfall in the background, you have Blastoise maybe taking a fighting stance or something, this is, this is great. The other illustration that I want to feature from Pokemon Go is another one by Hataya, this is the Zatu. And I still remember when I pulled this, I looked at this illustration and I thought this was really, really cool. And I still do, this is beautiful. Let's quickly move on to Lost Origin and start off with this Shift Tree by Kawayo. And I can immediately tell the influence of this illustration that went into drawing the Lugia V alternate art from Silver Tempest. Kawayo is also a really long-standing artist drawing their first card all the way back in 2009. And so far, their art style is still really, really good. Let's move it on to a cute illustration. Here we have the Pikachu by Kurumitsu. I feel like this is different from the usual illustration we get. This seems to be much, much more colorful and everything. And, well, you have Pikachu just devouring berries. Staying with the Pikachu evolution line, here we have a Raichu, illustrated by Ghidorah. Very dynamic illustration, you have the lightning or the electricity going around the Raichu, and it looks like it's chasing something. Last but not least for Lost Origin, we have the Ghastly by Tika Matsuno. And I've said it so many times before, I just love illustrations where the Pokemon are super, super happy. And this is no different. This is so adorable. I love this. Let's move it on to the second to last Sword and Shield set, Silver Tempest. And let's look at the Brexen from Licton. For some reason, I like this illustration much better than the Evolution Delphox. This is just super, super cool. You have the fire in the background as well as the smoke. And you have the Brakeson with a twig on fire, maybe implying that there has been a fight or something here. Next up we have another illustration by Mitsuhiro Arita and it is a God of War. And this is what I mentioned before. This is one of the, if not the most beautiful God of War illustrations ever. I'm honestly, I'm lost for words. It's, it's so beautiful, the flowers and everything. Honestly, if this illustration was available as like a really big print, I would hang this on my wall. I'm not joking. It's it, it's that beautiful. But we still have other cards to cover, so let's move it on to this Terrakian by Nagamiso. Mountains in the background, you have the wind effect illustrated. Beautifully done. Last up for Silver Tempest, we have this Crobat by Yuya Oka. This is giving me Count Dracula vibes for some reason. Of course, dark at night, you have the full moon. And you have Crobat and also some Zubats and Golbats in the background there flying around. And like a spooky looking castle. Very, very cool. And to finish this list off, we have Crown Zenith, the last Sword and Shield expansion. And I only want to feature one illustration in particular. It is of course the Corfish by 0313. And I've said it so many times before, I'm gonna say it again. I love illustrations where Pokemon are super happy. This this just makes me happy, I like this. So I hope I did get to show you some of the illustrations that you might have missed, that you might have ignored or something. Which of these illustrations do you like best? Or maybe I have missed something that I haven't covered? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this video then a like would be very much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content in the future and I hope I will see you in the next one. Peace peace.